The 2010 NFL season kicks off tonight in New Orleans, home of the Super Bowl champion Saints, who in just about an hour begin the defense of their title against the Minnesota Vikings, the team they defeated last season in overtime here to reach Super Bowl 44. Drew Brees was the Super Bowl MVP, throwing for two touchdowns in the Saints' victory over the Colts. Now he's primed for his 10th NFL season and his fifth in New Orleans. Following yet another spring and summer of uncertainty and speculation, Brett Favre returns for a 20th season, a month away from his 41st birthday. You'll hear from Favre and Brees as we get closer to kickoff. Right now, we're in the center of something New Orleans does especially well, a parade. This one heading down to Cater Street in the city's historic French Quarter, celebrating the beginning of the NFL season. Hello, everyone. I'm Bob Costas, and we, as you can plainly see, are cruising down or floating down the French Quarter. Meanwhile, over at the Superdome, they're getting set to raise the Saints championship banner, and that should be a great moment for residents of this city and this region, given the symbolic role that the Saints have played in the area's ongoing recovery. In the meantime, prior to kickoff, we have performances from several non-football superstars, and we'll begin with Taylor Swift, her new song, Mine, from her upcoming album, Speak Now. Here is the four-time Grammy Award winner, Taylor Swift. Uh -oh.
Taylor Swift with her new song Mine and there's much more ahead from New Orleans as the NFL kicks off the 2010 season Mardi Gras style. Still to come, more hit music with Taylor Swift. Live performances from the Dave Matthews Band. Plus, Drew Brees talks about how the Saints' emotional Super Bowl victory lifted the Crescent City. And Brett Favre on his return to football following the Vikings' crushing overtime loss to the Saints in the NFC Championship game. All that and the kickoff to the 2010 NFL season. Coming up live from New Orleans. We have a great matchup on Fox here in week one between the Green Bay Packers and the Philadelphia Eagles. Of course, for the Packers, it all starts with Aaron Rodgers. Last season, 4,400 yards passing, and he's got all of his weapons coming back. This team is loaded. On the other side of the ball for Philadelphia, Kevin Cobb begins his era at quarterback in place of Donovan McNabb. How will he do? Well, we'll soon find out. I do know this. They've got as good a collection of young receivers as there is in the National Football League. Should be an explosive game week one and a whole lot of fun. Now let's go to John Gruden. Well, thanks, Troy. And we're excited about another great year of Monday Night Football. And it all starts with the New York Jets and the Baltimore Ravens. Brand new stadium and two unbelievable defenses. I guarantee you this. Put your seatbelt on because there's going to be a lot of hitting in this football game. Star-studded defenses, two young quarterbacks. Both teams can run the ball, but every yard will be well-earned. And we're excited about another great season of Monday Night Football here. Back to you, Bob Costas. All right, guys. All right, John, here on NBC, Sunday Night Football opens with Donovan McNabb's on, debut for Washington against the Cowboys. Coverage begins guys. with Football Night in America nice at 7 Eastern, where we'll highlight all the week one action. Dan Patrick, Tony Dungy, and Rodney Harrison will be at 30 Rock each Sunday night, but tonight, Come They're at the on Superdome. As Damn. And as safely Bob, as you guys uh, can. Rodney was kind enough to keep reminding us that the Patriots, the last team to repeat 2003-2004. When you first got to camp after the first Super Bowl, what did Coach Belichick say to you guys? From the very first day. He didn't wait to train in camp, Dan. Very first day, he said, last year has nothing to do with this year. You guys got to realize every single game that you play, It's going to be like a Super Bowl, so you guys better be ready. You won in 2006. You go to camp in 2007. What did you say to your team? Well, I told my team what Chuck Knoll told me when I played for the Steelers. That is, there's no such thing as repeating because it's a different team. You've got to go out and build the legacy for that team. So put those Super Bowl rings away and go to work. Maybe he should have listened to Belichick. <laughs> <laughs> In case you're wondering, uh, Sean Payton told his Saints, avoid the disease of me. Don't be selfish this year. The quarterback on the 03-04 Patriots, of course, Tom Brady, involved in a car accident earlier this morning. Sports Illustrated's Peter King joining us with an update. Peter. Well, Dan, it's 6.34 this morning. Tom Brady was involved in a car accident in Boston's Back Bay section. And he was not hurt seriously. He was dazed but unhurt. He went on to practice, practice normally with the team, and ended up doing fine. He told teammates, don't worry about me. I'll be there Sunday. Everything's okay. And I expect when they face the Cincinnati Bengals on Sunday that Tom Brady will be just fine, Dan. Peter, Peter King from Sports Illustrated, fast approaching the kickoff of the 2010 season. As we get ready, Vikings All-Pro guard Steve Hutchinson making final preparations, as is the Saints Super Bowl hero Tracy Porter, whose late-game interception TV in Super Bowl 44 sealed his team's historic victory. And as soon as we return, another performance from Taylor Swift as the NFL opening kickoff 2010 continues from New Orleans. You belong with me, Taylor Swift.
The Lombardi Trophy belongs to New Orleans. And when we come back, Drew Brees talks about how much the Saints Super Bowl victory impacted this city. I saw New Orleans as an opportunity. The way that my wife and I were embraced when we arrived here, we just felt like this, this was where we belonged. This stadium used to have holes in it. It used to be wet. It's not wet anymore. This is for the city of New Orleans. Saints fans, you're going to Miami. Back in New Orleans where the party continues, complete with a parade through the French Quarter celebrating the Saints Super Bowl victory and the kickoff to the 2010 season. Meanwhile, yesterday, Rodney Harrison and Tony Dungy were among those who joined NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell and First Lady Michelle Obama at the Brock Elementary School in nearby Slidell, Louisiana. They were promoting the new partnership between the First Lady's Let's Move campaign against childhood obesity and the NFL's own Play 60 initiative, which encourages children to live healthier and more active lives. As we get ready for Saints Vikings, we note that the Saints Super Bowl victory this past Be February sure seemed to Super lift this community game. even more than is generally the case for a Super Bowl winning city. Part of that has to do with the Saints long standing history of futility, but more of it has to do with the lingering impact of Hurricane Katrina. Here's NBC Nightly News anchor and managing editor Brian Williams. Coming back after Hurricane Katrina has been a struggle for New Orleans. The storm laid bare a slew of problems, a persistently high crime rate, corruption, racial and economic tensions, a troubled public school system, and engineering the flood control system that was supposed to protect this city. Five years later, a lot of streets are still dotted with abandoned houses, bearing that iconic spray paint tattoo from Katrina rescue crews. But this city has a fighting spirit and the massive effort to rebound and rebuild is well underway. In this place where we're standing right now, there were over 1,500 deaths. That was unnecessary, it shouldn't happen. I got angry, I got really angry. Brad Pitt's Make It Right Foundation is building 150 solar powered homes for low income residents in the hard hit section of New Orleans, the Lower Ninth Ward. These homes are they're elevated above Katrina flood waters and they all have egress to get out on top so none of these homeowners will suffer the, those horrors. You can see the changes in New Orleans. You can also hear them. New Orleans musicians have been fiercely dedicated to bringing the music that helps define this place back to the streets where Louis Armstrong grew up and jazz was born. I think it's very easy to be overwhelmed when you see so much devastation, but we just said, let's focus on musicians, let's see what we can do to bring that part of the community back. Local musicians Harry Connick Jr. and Branford Marsalis, who both trained under Branford's legendary dad, Ellis Marsalis, started the Musicians Village, one of the first construction projects in the Upper Ninth Ward after Katrina. Heart to heart and soul to soul. Jesse Moore and Chip Wilson are two local musicians who became neighbors in the village and then decided to work together. I'm not sure there was a design in terms of how this was supposed to work, but it, it worked. Nothing has united the people of New Orleans more in the years since Katrina than the Saints' stunning last-minute triumph in the 2010 Super Bowl. gave this battered city a chance to come together and celebrate a sorely needed soaring victory. We played for so much more than just ourselves. We played for our city. We played for the entire Gulf Coast region. We, we played for all the, the entire Houdat Nation who was behind us every step of the way. I really think that that infused the people of New Orleans with a new sense of confidence and a new sense of purpose. You know what, we're gonna survive. You found redemption and it's wearing a gold helmet. Yes, it's fabulous.
Brian Williams joins us now in Jackson Square five years down the road. How far back has New Orleans and this region come? Well you know here we are. This is a New Orleans night. Is there anything better than this Jackson Square. I saw some people having beverages here today. Shocking. Right out here in the street I swear. Um, and you know the Superdome alone if you just take that I'm going to go in there happily tonight but it's going to be a strange feeling mm -hmm. uh, because having been with a couple of thousand people the night of that storm it's impossible to describe what that was like and really they've come so far back they've worked so hard too many FEMA markings still on too many houses just out from the main part of the city and just as the city and region is staggering to its feet oh. then comes the BP oil spill unbelievable but if you're going to hand one city one region twin tragedies in five years this is the place because they've got the spirit they've got the fight you can try to push them down they're not going to stay there and by the way am i allowed to plug do it documentary tomorrow night we're awfully proud of this hour of television 10 o'clock tomorrow evening on msnbc a look at what they've been through and where they hope to go in this city and in this region and thank you for having me thanks brian see you at the game my pleasure we'll, we'll have a good do. time all right everything seemed to change for the saints in 2006 when they brought in a new coach sean payton and a new quarterback drew Brees. the saints resurgence culminated with their victory over the Colts in Super Bowl 44. Tony Dungy spoke with Breeze about what that moment meant for him and for his adopted city. Having him up on the podium, what, yeah. what did that mean to you? That'll always be one of the greatest moments of my life. Grabbed him, couldn't wait to hug him and kiss him. And, and then here comes the confetti down, and you're seeing world champions across the Jumbotron. Everyone crying and jumping for joy, and just it was a reflection. It was a reflection on where we started and, and where we were now. And then, of course, the next day, you're going to come back to New Orleans and. Oh, unbelievable. <laughs> You know, it's funny because New Orleans was planning a parade, win or lose. <laughs> and I guess if there's one thing New Orleans can do, it can throw a parade. <laughs> it was truly an amazing feeling because we, we had been through so much in order to get to that point. Harry Connick Jr., I saw him talking about the Saints, and he said, hey, it wasn't winning the Super Bowl, that was great, but really what the Saints did was bring us hope by playing again in 06. Tell me a little bit about reopening the Dome, that game against Atlanta. Well, the most amazing thing was that you know, in, the, in the previous season that they had played in the Dome, season ticket sales were right around 30,000 and the Dome seats almost 70. Well, going into that 06 season where so many people had been displaced, you know, they're trying to rebuild their lives, yet somehow they found a way to sell out the Superdome. And I think that's when you realize that, you know what, every time we step on the field, we not only represent ourselves, but we represent this city. And just by winning a football game, you can give people hope. You can lift their spirits. And you can let them know that anything is possible. We can come back stronger. Not just come back, but New Orleans is going to come back stronger. you guys have done you and your wife getting involved in New Orleans has been special has it been one event where you say even if we hadn't won a game it, it, this is why I'm here and this is what made it work I would say that whereas you would assume a fan would say hey great game or you know good luck in the game this weekend or something football related I would say that nine out of ten people that come up to me on the street say thank you for what you've done for this city Thank you for being a part of this community. We love you for that, more so than you know anything you could ever do on the football field. I think that's where that's where you realize that this goes well beyond just the game of football. Back with Tony Dungy and Rodney Harrison. You were there when Breeze was drafted by San Diego. You were a member of the Chargers. Any idea he was going to develop into this kind of quarterback? First, let me say, I'm really proud of Drew Breeze. He's a good friend and a tremendous player and, and a great person. But back then, I knew he could be a good player, but not a Super Bowl MVP type player. 
And I think the biggest difference between Drew Brees now and Drew Brees, Drew Brees back when I played against him, Dan, with him, was his confidence. His confidence level is just through the roof, and he believes that he's one of the best quarterbacks out there. Matter of fact, Coach, if you look at the last two seasons, his production has been off the charts. He's probably one of the top two quarterbacks in the National Football League. Top two, wow. So you're saying he and Manning, where's, where's your quarterback <laughs> in that? You put I'm Manning's name in it. Yeah. <laughs> I would have to say Manning, over the last two years, his production has been off the charts. If you look at what he does, Breeze still seems to play with a chip on his shoulder. He was told the arm isn't strong enough, you're not tall enough, not big enough. What is it about him that makes him so successful? Well, what I really like about him, he's got poise, he's a great decision maker, and he's got accuracy. We're going to see that here. He's got Reggie Bush on a little post route. He knows he's got man-to-man -man coverage on the linebacker. That's where he wants to go, but he doesn't tip it off. He looks the defense off. He comes back to Breeze. Now, here's the poise. He's ready to throw, but he's got pressure. He's got to reset his feet and still deliver this ball accurately where Reggie Bush can catch it and run with it. Here's another way they let him make decisions with formations. They've got their wide receivers on linebackers, their tight ends out wide on corners. He sees Jeremy Shockey, a big man, on a small corner. He knows where he's going to go. He makes this decision in less than one second and gets it to him quick. Rodney put him in with the league company with Peyton Manning. It's uh, ironic you bring that up. 122 touchdown passes each for those quarterbacks over the last four years. Festivities here in New Orleans just getting underway. The 2010 NFL season ready to kick off. Still to come, Brett Favre talks about coming oh so close to the Super Bowl as his Vikings fell to the Saints in last season's NFC Championship game in this building. Those opportunities don't come around too often. It's tough. It's real tough. And up next, a live performance by the Dave Matthews Band. Welcome back to NFL Kickoff 2010, presented by Madden NFL 11. Big party in the Big Easy as the parade continues its rollicking march through the French Quarter. And the Saints and Vikings get set to reprise their matchup from the NFC Championship game of last season, beginning the new campaign tonight. And as the Superdome fills up not far from here, the celebration continues in Jackson Square, where a familiar crew follows Taylor Swift to the stage. Here is the Dave Matthews Band.
NFL Kickoff 2010, presented by Madden NFL 11, is brought to you by Visa, proud sponsor and preferred card of the NFL. By Verizon, official wireless service provider of the NFL. By Snickers, proud sponsor of the NFL. Snickers satisfies. By GMC, the official vehicle of the NFL. And by Madden NFL 11. Available now. EA Sports. It's in the game. Brett Favre said he had the best season of his career a year ago at the age of 40. And it's hard to argue the NFL's all-time leader in passing yards and touchdowns back for his 20th season. Al Michaels recently spoke with Favre about his latest comeback, tracing it back to the Vikings' loss on this field in the NFC title game back in January. Last year, you walk off the field, you're battered physically, you've lost an excruciating game in overtime, you don't go to the Super Bowl. What hurt more at that point, your body or your head? I remember it as if it were yesterday. Uh, you know, it was it was it was real emotional in the locker room. It was emotional on the on the podium. How could it not be? Pigs have flown. Hell is frozen. Oh. And throughout this decision process, going back to that moment, thinking, I don't know if I want this feeling ever again. At that time, I, I, you know, I was walking with my family across the, you know, the Superdome going back to the buses, and I said, I'm done, can't, I mean, that just, and it, it had nothing to do with the physical part of it, it had everything to do with the emotional part of it. Well, you walk off that field and you tell your family you're done, and now you're going to walk back onto that field. They're ready to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Probably like most people. No. But, the the end know, doesn't want you to play or no, doesn't want you to play? No, they want me to do what I want to do, which is iffy at times, whatever that is. Uh, but I, the one thing, of course, my family knows me, and they know how emotional that was. They know how much I put into it. I would hope that most people, whether you're a fan or not, would say, a guy gives it everything he, he possibly can. I'd love to win the Super Bowl, who wouldn't? But I know I'm going out on top one way or the other. So now you're back. When you walk in, is that gonna be a haunted house or a house of horrors or somehow serve as an inspiration for the season? Believe me, I, all I've heard about this off season is the Saints. The miracle in Miami has happened. The headlines, Saints team of destiny and all that stuff. It could have easily been Vikings, easily. I tip my hat to those guys. Now, do I want to beat them? Absolutely. Will it be easy? No. Brett Favre goes back to pass. He pumps. Intercepted. I can't believe what I'm seeing right now. That was the, by far the most hostile environment I've ever been in. I mean, it was, you couldn't hear anything. Um, I don't see why that would be any different this time. I don't know what else we can do to pave the way for the New Orleans Saints to go to the Super Bowl. If the year had ended with you hoisting the Lombardi Trophy, would you no be sitting here tonight? No brainer. I'd be gone. Gone. Yes. So you're coming back because there's unfinished business. That's, that's the only reason. Tony, let's go back to that final play, the play that essentially brought Brett Favre back. What did you see on it? Well, you see classic Brett Favre. He does a lot of things right, but he makes one mistake. They need about five yards here. They're going to have a play designed to get Bernard Varian free. They're going to try to pick his man, Tracy Porter, with Sidney Rice and just throw a quick ball to Varian in the flat, pick up those five or six yards and kick the field goal. But Jonathan Vilma, the captain of the defense, he's seen this play before. He checks the defense from man to man to a zone. Now Porter doesn't have to go back with Barron. He's going to let Jabari Greer, the corner on the other side of the field, pick Barron up. So Favre's first read is taken away. As he starts to scramble, though, he's got to keep his vision that way. He would see Barron wide open here, or he'd be able to run for the first down. But instead, he starts to look across his body, throw back in the middle of the field, and that's a mistake.
mistake, Rodney. Yeah, and I guarantee you, Coach, Tracy Porter, along with every def defensive back in the league, knows that Brett Favre's going to make one or two head-scratching plays that make, make you say, wow, how the heck did he make that play? But they also realize in the third or fourth quarter, he's going to make the key mistake, whether it's an interception or a fumble, that's going to cost him the game. Same kind of defensive philosophy we saw in the title game. The Saints going after Favre tonight. Going after Brett Favre, even if it involves a little dirty play like they did last year, hit him in the mouth and intimidate him. They won't intimidate Favre. You can't intimidate this guy. Are you kidding me? You can't intimidate Brett Favre. Sometimes when I played against Peyton, I wasn't afraid of Peyton, but he intimidated me because that's how good he is. He's good, but Favre, he can take some hits. He'll be ready to go. He knows they're going to come after him tonight. We're closing in on the kickoff of the 2010 season from here in New Orleans. For the days you can't be there, there's NFL Mobile. Get live streaming video of Thursday and Sunday night NFL games, NFL Network, and NFL Red Zone. This season, football comes to you only from Verizon, the official wireless service provider of the NFL. Download NFL Mobile at verizonwireless.com slash NFL or text NFL to 8915. NFL Kickoff 2010, presented by Madden NFL 11, is brought to you by Motorola. Are you ready to take the NFL with you wherever you go? The Droid X by Motorola. Motorola, get ready. By Verizon, official wireless service provider of the NFL. By Coors Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. By Madden NFL 11, available now. EA Sports, it's in the game. And by Pepsi Max, zero calories, maximum taste. Pepsi Max, official soft drink of the NFL. Back in New Orleans for the NFL's opening night, the Vikings will look to put the ball in the hands of Adrian Peterson, who scored a career-high 18 touchdowns last season, while Reggie Bush gets a momentary reprieve from the controversy surrounding his Heisman Trophy award as he gets set for the season opener. Saints-Vikings coming up. Meanwhile, here in Jackson Square, the Dave Matthews Band's performance continues with Why I Am. Thank you. 
Greg Matthews and some of New Orleans' finest with a rousing finish. Time for Saints-Vikings. Your wait is over. The NFL season is underway.